Deep in their Hell's Corner mine, Rod and Les are struggling to haul their two-ton digger up a narrow 18-metre mine shaft. I'm going to have to put a fair bit of pressure on it to stop it from going over there a million miles an hour. Because we'll pop our pipes. Now, if they break, if a hose bars, we're in deep. We're in. <laughs> as soon as you break a cable, it releases the pressure in your lines, which will allow our roof bolt to come down, which will allow the bloody frame to fall. Now, if it goes, Les, if it tips, it's going to go forward. So you go back into that hole behind you. Yeah, mate. Don't worry, I'll be out of the road like flash. Yeah, it's going. This is a real chance of one of us getting hurt. Don't move, don't breathe. Just watch that don't go your way, Les. On the surface, their ancient crane, Arnold, is the only thing stopping the heavy digger from toppling over. What are you doing? That's creeping like, so you're gonna have to go up and do something with it. The brake drum on the crane isn't holding. There must be broken soil in there, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah, come up, lad. Do you reckon we can tighten that brake up any? Will that solve any of the problem, or...? Well, that would solve a bit of a problem, yeah. Right, give me my box. And the shifter. Just watch you don't slip there, Les. You know, you see Les jumping around doing all this. He's 74 years old. Most 74-year-olds are sitting in front of the fire with a rug over their lap. Right, crank her up. It's holding. I think it'll be right now. It seems it'll stop creeping. The only way to know if Les's fix has worked is when they lift the digger. If he's failed, he'll be the one under the machine. And just remember the rules. If you kill yourself down here, I'm just filling the hole in. No, I understand that. Too much paperwork otherwise. Well, we're about to start lifting her out now. Hopefully, Les will just get it started up the hole, then he'll come up the emergency hole, then he'll guide it as I'm lifting her up. So this is the fun part, trying to get it up that bloody hole. Something's wrong. Hang on, hang on. Oil everywhere. We've got a bad oil leak. Kill it. We're standing here at the moment. That end's boiling water and spewing out. This end's bloody spewing out friggin' hydraulic oil. So it's not that bad, is it? It could be worse. <laughs> The Bushman's 60-year-old crane, Arnold, has sprung an oil leak, leaving their two-ton digger stuck down the mine. I think that's probably the main problem, is the caps broke. One of the caps on top of the hydraulic line is broken. I get a knife. We can't stop the hydraulic oil coming out. 70 kilometres from the nearest mechanic, the Bushman need a Bushman's fix. So what we'll do, is we'll cut a bit of bloody tree and then whittle it down to the right size and then jam it in there. Now, what part number do you reckon that, that is, Les? Oh, that'd have to go part number 1,569.74. Ah. Is this what all hydraulic engineers use, Les? Yep. We're real, real hungry for money, you know? We're, we're, we're at the desperation stage. To pinpoint the best spot for the digger in their new mine, Bondi, they'll test the walls with hand tools first. We need to find colour straight away. So I don't want to be digging for, you know, 20 metres before we find a bit, a bit of money. That's it. Hey, Les. Yeah? Might have something here. Want to have a look? Oh! -ho! That's nice. No, that's nice. Hey, that's got colour in it, Les. That's yeah, green. That's, that's nice green. That's not bad, Les. That's not bad at all. 
Oh, there's more... Uh, more up in there, too. A third piece. Oh, I told you we should have come here, didn't I? You wouldn't oh, bloody no, listen no, to no. me. You, you just hey. wanted to talk me out. It's big and it's cheesy. Look at that, hey? Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> it's a nice bloody colour there. That's red on black, mate. Oh, yeah. That's the money. Look at all the different colours in it. Beautiful. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. The boys are going to love that. Here you go, mate. Rod. Mark, is it? Yeah, Mark. You buying, mate? Yeah, mate, I'm buying. You buying? Oh, always buying. How are you? Pleased to meet you. You too, mate. Don't know much about Mark. That's the buyer we're going to sell to today. I've heard that he's, he's reasonably fair with uh, what he does, so you can't get better than that. All right, Mark, what I've got here, this is all together in one parcel, mate. Some nice... Really nice grey uh, base crystal in there. It's a jar of it, and there's some bloody good cutters in there, like that one there. And then I've saved the best till last. Have a look at that stuff. All on black. A couple of them got some nice red stones. Some bloody nice colour in them. Yeah, it's nice stone, isn't it? Yeah, pretty stone that one. Yeah. What are we talking here, mate? You can have all of that for the unbelievable low price of three and a half grand. What's that look for? <laughs> Come on, mate. Be realistic here. I am being realistic. This is worth three and a half grand any day of the week. Carl, let's get serious here. What's a, what real money? What are we talking about real money? Bloody opal buyers are all the same. If you sort of, you know, buying off me all the time, I, I can look after you. I'll come down to bloody three grand. Look, let's not muck about here. Two and a half. Done deal. <sighs> Money's on the table. Prefer it a little bit more, but if that's all we're going to get... You, you're happy with two and a half? Yeah. Undo. I think he was OK. He's probably a reasonable buyer. Their opal is a mixture of black and crystal in the rough, flecked with red, yellow, green and blue. There's 16 grams, sold for $2,500. The most the Bushmen have made in 12 months. So me and Les are very happy, you know, we get to buy a bit of diesel, old Les gets to buy a beer in town tomorrow and everyone's bloody happy.